Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today we are going to be comparing three different affordable EVs that are coming out very soon. Let's get into it. All right, everybody. So if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I own a Hyundai Kona Electric and I absolutely love it. You also probably know that I have a reservation in for the Volvo EX30 because I'm excited about a, a lot of the technical aspects of the vehicle. So I wanted to kind of do a comparison of the upcoming 2024 Kona Electric, the Volvo EX30, and I'm going to include the 2024 Kia Niro because it's essentially the same car as the Hyundai Kona, but you know, um, different branding and um, maybe a little bit better materials throughout the vehicle. So let's quickly just dig in to all the, the specs here, do a comparison, and then I'll give you my opinion and we'll call it a video. Uh, but I think a lot of people might be cross shopping these vehicles and I'm hoping to kind of bring a little bit of enlightenment as to um, why or why not uh, you should get any of these vehicles. So first, Let's start with the Kia Nero. They are doing a little bit of a update, but nothing too crazy with the 2024 Kia Nero. Um, I didn't really notice anything in particular, but I think the biggest thing is they're adding a frunk. I don't think there was a frunk, and I think there now is a frunk. Uh, if I'm wrong, you can just yell at me in the comments below, but from what I was gleaning when I was doing all my research, that's really the major difference. There's probably some small stuff here and there. So. It costs $39,550 for the base model. I believe it is Wind, the Wind model. It is a front wheel drive. It charges 10 to 80 in 43 minutes, has a range of 253 miles, a max charge speed of 85 kilowatts, uh, 201 horsepower, 188 pound feet of torque. Um, so it's, you know, adequate. It's going to have a nice EV feel to it. And I'm not positive about the frunk, but the frunk looks almost identical to the Hyundai Kona frunk. So um, I'm going to call it a 0.95 cubic feet uh, volume frunk. And then it has 63.7 cubic feet of storage with the seats down and then 22.8 cubic feet of storage with the seats up in the rear or as they call in the UK, the boot. Um, so it's a decent size um, storage for this size uh, car, the compact SUV. Then the rear passenger leg room is 36.9 inches, um, which is nice. Uh, it's bigger than my Kona's leg room. So I think it's going to be pretty comfortable. And we'll get to the, the new Kona with that leg room. And then the onboard charger is an 11.5 kilowatt onboard charger, 48 amp, which is awesome. And that actually is true of all the vehicles we're going to talk to talk about today. The 2024 Hyundai Kona, we're not sure about the price. I keep looking and finding, but I want to get this video out to you all because some people might be trying to put a reservation in for a Volvo EX30 and they don't want to drop the $500 if they might end up getting the Hyundai Kona, even though it is refundable, but it is kind of, you know, annoying to have to put down that much money if you're not going to end up getting in the car. So price-wise, the 2023 model was $33,550. We don't know what this model year is going to be. Um... From what I saw in the Europe it, prices, it looks like it went up a little bit, so we can expect a price bump. But I've talked about this before. I don't know if Hyundai can really afford a price bump. I think that um, if they want to be competitive with other manufacturers, especially here, the, the Volvo EX30, if they raise a price, aside for some things we're going to talk about later, space being one of the biggest things, like there is really no reason to get this over um, another vehicle. So... I think they need to, to think about the price, and I know that there's a lot of economics that goes into it, but um, you know, if you're going to spend $35,000 and you can get a Volvo EX30 that charges almost twice as fast, if that's what you want out of a car, then... All right, moving on. Um, the 10 to 80% charge time is the same as the Nero because it's the same platform, essentially, 43 minutes. Uh, 260 miles of range, so it's a little bit up from the 2023 and, and prior... Uh, model years by, I think, one mile, maybe two miles. Uh, max charge speed is 85 kilowatts. We don't know that for sure. I have read 
literature that that Hyundai's put out that says 85 kilowatt hours, but I was actually in uh, some of the Europe websites and they were advertising 104 kilowatt uh, max charging speed. So I'm not positive. So let's go with 85 kilowatts. I'm not sure if Hyundai realized, oh, it, that's not gonna be really competitive with some of these other vehicles. We need to bump it up a little bit. I'm not sure if that's what happened, uh, but here we are. Um, has the exact same horsepower and torque as the Kia Nero, so the 201 horsepower, 188 pound-feet of torque. That is actually a reduction of torque from the prior model years, which I think is a good thing. Um, I've talked about it before with my Kona. Um, you know, when I press down on the accelerator, sometimes my tires spin. Uh, it just has um, it has way too much torque, so I'm actually glad they backed it off a little bit, um, and that might help save people's tires as well. The front, it's got the 0.95 cubic uh, feet of front space, the uh, almost the, almost the same um, cargo space as the Nero. Uh, the with the seats down is 63.7, but with the seats up in the rear, it's 25.5 cubic feet. So it's actually three, uh, well, two about two cubic feet bigger. So that's if you're looking for space, maybe the Kona is your choice. The rear passenger leg room is actually. Uh, slightly smaller, but that's not that much smaller than the Kia Nero at 36.4 inches. So uh, definitely going to be way more comfortable than the old uh, Hyundai Kona models um, if you're sitting in the rear. And then again, it's got that 11.5 kilowatt onboard charger. Lastly, uh, the vehicle that I'm most interested in, but maybe I'll change my mind. We'll see is the 2024 Volvo EX30, comes in at 34950 That is gonna be for, I believe they're calling it the core trim. Uh, it's gonna be lacking a lot of uh, features that the upper level trims have, but what you will get is the 26.5 uh, minute charge time. You are gonna get the 275 miles of um, rated range. You're gonna get the 153 kilowatt max charge speed, which is almost um, double both the Nero and the Hyundai Kona. You're getting 268 horsepower. You're getting 253 pound-feet of torque. So um, it's going to be a lot, lot speedier than the Kona Nero and even than the old um, Kona. A very small front, <laughs> 0.25 cubic feet. Uh, and then this is where definitely the EX30 um, lags in comparison to the other two vehicles. It only has 31.9 cubic feet of uh, storage with the seats down and then 11.23 cubic feet with the seats up. Uh, so if you're looking for storage, this is not the vehicle for you. Sorry. Um, the rear passenger leg room is 32.32 inches uh, of space. So it's very small. That's actually a little smaller than the old Hyundai Kona. And that's four inches smaller than the current Kona and Nero. So um, if you are planning on like doing like ride share thing or, um, you know, you have older children like high schoolers and you know they're like on the basketball team they're like seven foot tall uh it's probably not going to be a very comfortable car so you might want to consider something else if that's going to be your use case and as i've already stated the onboard charger is 11.5 kilowatts so that's just kind of a little spec comparison of these three vehicles now what's my recommendation to you well it depends on your use case so if you just need a daily commuter car like that's it um and you can charge at home, or maybe if you have to, you could charge out somewhere, you know, but it's not, you're not in a rush. I think either the Nero or the Hyundai Kona is the way you should go. They're bigger, they've got decent ranges, the charge speed is adequate if you're using like a city charger and like you're, you're, you can, you know, plug in, go grab some groceries, come back out, and then you've got your charge for the week or whatever. That is a great um, option, I think, if you, if that's your lifestyle and your use case. Um, especially if you have family members, dogs, whatever. If it's just you or like the car is mainly for you going to work, so kind of like my use case, and then you occasionally like to take some road trips on your own or, or with your family, if you have like a, a smaller family, then the Volvo EX30 might be a good choice. Um, the charge speed is awesome. The range is great. Um, and especially when you compare it to the other two vehicles, you can charge, you know, to 80% in 26 minutes versus uh, 43. So you're going to save a ton of time. It's just <laughs> this, and it's got a lot of power. It's going to be zippy. And if you go for the, um, the dual motor option, it's like 400 some horsepower and 400 some pound feet of torque. 
So that's going to be incredible if you want to kind of option up to that, which you can't do in the Kona or Nero. Those only come in, in the front wheel drive. So, yeah, that, those are my thoughts about it. The Volvo EX30, it's just not big enough to have a lot of people. It is just, I think, a one person commuter car, maybe occasional long distance trip, which is, which honestly is going to be I, perfect for me. Um, but I am, I am weighing the uh, reality that I am not going to take a ton of road trips in this car because you know usually my road trips are with my family and we, we're going to take the ID4. Um, so. Do I really need it? Could I get away with a Kona? Another Kona. I love the Kona. Um, I like I like all the updates they brought to the 2024 Kona. I don't know, but we'll, we'll, I'll figure that out later. One, one last thing that I wanted to kind of talk about is like the standard features. Um, it's hard to tell because Hyundai Kona and Volvo EX30 don't have a ton of information out yet about the, the US builds and standard features. But based on prior looking and experiences, the Kia Nero. Uh, is more expensive, but tends to come historically with more standard features than the Kona and Volvo um, base models. And that's why the Kona and Volvo are able to be cheaper price-wise compared to the Nero. So when you're looking at the vehicles too, think about what, what are my must-haves as far as features go. You know, look look at the, the three different cars and then pick the one that, that fits you best. A lot of those things... Um, like aren't super important to me. Like I don't care about a moonroof. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I don't have to have ventilated seats. It'd be super nice, but I don't have to have ventilated seats. But for some people that is an absolute must, an absolute must. And so just kind of look at, uh, you know, what you want, what you need and, uh, you know, make your decision based off of that. But if you're looking uh, at price point, I think the Volvo, um, is going to be your best bet unless Hyundai does come in lower than the Volvo, which they might maybe, maybe buy $400, but, uh, We'll see. <laughs> and then last thing that's worth noting, none of these vehicles uh, as of right now, at least or the, this model year, the 2024 model year, are going to come um, built in the USA. So they're not going to qualify for the tax credit if you're eligible for the tax credit. I have some other videos regarding that information. But uh, based on what I've seen, most of these vehicles are going to have some kind of lease special with that lease loophole of the $7,500 which works out uh, really nice for you because you don't actually have to do anything about it and it doesn't matter what your um, your finances are because that's all with the dealer. So definitely uh, consider uh, maybe leasing these and then purchasing them. Um, that might be, might be a good option for you. Or you might lease it and be like, you know what? Uh, maybe technology changes and you want to get a better car and you can upgrade or, or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever, whatever you all want to do. So those are my thoughts here with these three cars. Uh, I can't really recommend one because I think they're all going to be really great cars. I love the Kona. I think the updates are going to make it much more comfortable to be in. Um, obviously, a lot of people have the Neros. Hertz has the big deal with all the Neros in their fleet, and I see people driving them around all the time. And then Volvo is just going to be a really cool, um, really cool car given the size, the charging, and the range. So um, let me know what car would you pick down below. Uh, I still don't know. I, I kind of want the Volvo EX30 because of the charging speed, but you know, my heart, my heart does, uh, you know, always kind of go back to the Kona because it was my, my first EV. So, uh, that's it. Uh, anyways, thanks again for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. I love to see your comments down below. Please remember to like and subscribe. Also, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to EV charging site reviews. I'm actually going to get back to putting some more, um, uh, charging site reviews have been a little busy lately, so I've, I've gotten behind on them. Uh, but those will be popping up. And I have a couple people across the country, uh, my brother uh, and a viewer, a viewer subscriber, uh, who, who have contributed. So um, be on the lookout for not just stuff in Maryland and the East Coast, but out West as well. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.